Hey, this is Matt. One of the common use cases I hear about is to do some sort of template data entry for end users. Um, and I'm going to show you an example of uh, how to build one of these templates. I'm going to use uh, planning for my example, but you can certainly do this with any ad hoc provider like SBase or HFM. Um, and the key there is ad hoc. So in planning and HFM, they have a concept of data entry forms, which are great. It really gives a structured layout for users. Um, it gives them a similar to feel, uh, similar feel for the forms that they've opened on the web, and they can have lots of features exposed in this data entry form that are specific to data entry. This is a really structured experience, and it will remain that way as it should be. Um, right now, I have a form called Plan Department Expenses Open, and I want to use this form as a basis for creating a data entry template. Now, you could start with a regular ad hoc, ad hoc analysis. But I, I really want to start with this as a basis because it has the layout I want and most of the information I want. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and click Analyze, which is a feature in planning that will take me from the form to an ad hoc analysis. Um, so now I have an ad hoc analysis, and uh, obviously this isn't the type of template I want. It's pretty plain. Um, but it's a great starting point for me. So I'm going to do some things with options first. So I'm going to go ahead and set some options on this. I'm going to make sure um, that I have... Uh, indentation set to none. Um, um, actually, back in member options, I'll make sure I have preserved formulas turned on. Just some common things I like in ad hoc. And if I go over to formatting, I want to make sure use Excel formatting is on. And I'm going to turn off adjust column width. It's great for forms, great for certain situations. In this situation, I want it off. Um, I'm not going to use move formatting on operations because I plan to do all my operations like pivots and zooms before I start formatting the sheet, and then it'll be just used as a template, and there won't be any pivots or zooms going on. If I hit OK here, this is actually going to store those options with the sheet, so as I distribute it, users will get those same options when they open it. I'm going to put the toolbar at the top because that's kind of where I like to anchor in it for a planning data entry experience. Um, and I know I want to get to this, some detailed data here. These are the high-level expense categories. I'm going to drill in on uh, each of these categories. And uh, total year, I don't like a whole lot here. So I'm going to uh, copy and paste that over here. And I'll actually delete this whole column. At this point, I'm mostly dealing with just Excel type functionality. Uh, I'm going to highlight all of this. And I'm going to change my number format to dollar signs. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the decimals. Because for our planning purposes, we don't, we don't uh, enter decimals. Um, and at this point, if I want, I can go ahead and refresh the data and show you that that's all sticking around. Um, I'll go ahead and highlight this first row. Maybe it's important to me and I want to highlight it to the user. I'll make it bold. Um, I'll maybe center everything, make it a little taller, and maybe even apply uh, a nice heading to it. Um, down the side, I can do a similar thing. Maybe I'll make it bold. Um, I'm not sure if I want to use a heading, but maybe I'll use an accent. Um, make this a little wider. Turn that bold on. Um, and you know, you can see I'm starting to format things kind of in a nice way that might be easy for my user to understand it. Um, I'm going to do a lot of uh, Excel type functionality, so I'll probably just show you some basics and then I'll jump to a completed form. But I'll highlight this. One of the things I like to do is um, grouping which is in the data tab. always forget that. Turn on grouping. I might group the quarters. I won't do them all, but I'll give you an idea. Um, so the user can go ahead and collapse uh, the months and just see the quarters. Um, I could do things like add spark lines, really add uh, maybe highlight the cells here that have a specific type of data where they can enter data. Maybe I'll put um, a specific accent in it, like input. You know, maybe that's the symbol for input. Maybe um, at the total levels, I might decide that I want to put a specific accent for um, output, so that they don't try and input text there. And maybe I want to do something clever here, like uh, I'm going to indent this a little bit, and then maybe even make the font larger, so that they know this is a total value. So I'm not going to go ahead, like I said, and format this whole sheet, but I think you get the idea that at this point I'm just leveraging Excel features and functionality. I still have all the planning uh, capabilities that I have, like refresh, send data, changing the POV, 
Um, in fact, I have some of the cell specific capabilities like supporting details, cell comments, uh, attachments, other things that the user might want to do. But let me go ahead and open one that I've already worked on for a little while. So I'll close out the Smart View panel and I'll go ahead and open a data input template I've already built out. So obviously I spent a lot more time on this one from a, a formatting perspective. And I inserted charts and a few other things and I'll go through that. But I'm going to go ahead and first and refresh the data. So now I'm looking at data for California. Maybe I'm the California um, you know, division manager or division uh, director and I need to enter my data. I have these nice groupings so I can go ahead and close out quarters and what's great is Excel kind of handles a lot of great stuff for me. It, it hides those months in my chart and I can really get a perspective for the months that I'm seeing on the screen. Um, I also added some sparkline data here so now I'm looking at the quarterly trend and right away I notice that all of my expense is really in the, uh, the last quarter. I've actually highlighted that using a sparkline feature that just shows the highest and lowest data point. Lowest in green and highest in red because we're dealing with budget expenses and we want to highlight those ones that uh, in red that are maybe bad. And I've also created a, a, a little data entry experience here where where I want to enter data is in, is in kind of this orangish pink color and I might decide that I need to tweak my first quarter to 70,000 and I can go ahead and submit that data. So, in summary, you know, you can really create some robust templates. They can have all the features that you would have in a planning forms experience. Like I showed supporting details, sell comments, attachments, submit data, and, and a whole bunch of other things. And I can leverage all the features that Excel has to offer to make the, uh, the template experience a positive one for my end users. So, I think this is a good use case for a business analyst who is experienced in Excel and wants to distribute a template to some end users who just have to do some basic data entry and don't need to know a whole lot about SmartView or even Excel. Thanks a lot. Hope it helps.